In this video, I'll take you through step by step as I set up a new iPad. Ok, here's my new iPad. This is an 11 inch M3 iPad Air. And the first thing that is really helpful for the setup process is that Apple ship new iPads with a bit of charge. This one is actually at 86%. So you don't need to worry about plugging your iPad into the mains and waiting around for it to charge. Obviously, this might not be the case if you grab a refurbished or second hand iPad, so just bear that in mind. Anyway, when I first turn this new iPad on, I'm greeted with this screen. Swiping up, I'm prompted to select a language and in the next screen, what region of the world I'm using the iPad in. In the next screen, I can select how I'd like text and icons to appear on my iPad screen. You can leave this as default and change it later in settings if you want, and that's what I'll do here. In the next screen, I can set up things like my Apple ID and Wi-Fi password using another iPad or iPhone. You can also do all of this manually, but the quick start method is much quicker, unsurprisingly, and easier. I have my M2 iPad Pro here, and when I bring it close to the iPad Air, I'm prompted to set up my new iPad using the Apple ID that's currently logged into it. When I hit continue, I'm prompted to position the image on the iPad Air in the camera of the iPad Pro. Once that's done, I can select what account I want to sign into. I have the additional option here because I have my son set up on a family account. You also do have the option to set up a new child account here if you're setting up an iPad, well, for your child. I'm now prompted to enter the passcode from my iPad Pro. Once that's done, I need to wait a few seconds for the iPad to activate. There is a software update available for this iPad, which I can do now or later, though not much later as we'll find out. In the next screen, there's a rundown of Apple's data and privacy policy, and on the screen after that, I can set up Touch ID. This will be different if you're setting up an iPad Pro model that has Face ID for verification instead of Touch ID. Whereas I need to repeatedly touch the Touch ID sensor with the finger I want to use to unlock the iPad, you'll be asked to put your face in frame and move it around while the iPad Pro's Face ID sensor gets to know your face. Once this is done, I can set up more fingerprints, but as I can do that later on in the settings menu, I'll just move on. Ok, so on the next screen I can choose whether to set up this new iPad using an iCloud backup or by transferring data directly from another iPad. Both of these options are great if you just want a carbon copy of the apps and settings that you have on an already existing iPad. You can also set a new iPad up completely fresh by tapping on the Other Options button here. I have my iPad Pro set to back up to iCloud regularly, so I'll select the Download from iCloud option here and clone it onto this new iPad Air. Whatever option you choose, you need to agree to Apple's terms and conditions to proceed. By all means, take the time to read through this and make sure you're happy with it before agreeing if you want. The iPad will now sign me in and on the next screen I can choose what I want to bring over to this iPad. I'll keep things simple here by just hitting continue, but you can dive in and select what apps, data and settings you want if needed. Next I can choose to turn on location services, again this can be set up later if you don't want to do it now, and enter info for any credit and debit cards I have linked to my Apple ID. After that, I can choose whether to share iPad analytics with Apple and whether to share app analytics with app developers. Next up is some info about Apple intelligence. You won't see this on iPad models that don't support it though, obviously. Next up, I can set up Siri. Again, this can be done later if you prefer. And then I can't actually go any further without updating the iPad Air to iPadOS 18.3.2. Great. 
it didn't actually take too long, to be fair. Restoring from iCloud took about 12-ish minutes overall. And now that it's done, I can dive in and start using my new iPad Air. All of the apps you can see here will download in the background, but can actually be used as soon as they're downloaded. So that's how I set up a new iPad. Let me know how you do it down in the comments and give that like button a good hard slap while you're down there. I really appreciate it and it helps more people see this video. And for more information about setting up your new iPad for music production, watch this next.